So my name is Eli Gregory. I'm an iOS engineer uh, from the ArcGIS open source apps team. Um, I work on uh, iOS runtime open source applications. So if you've been to a developer summit before or uh, Esri UC, then you might know us as the example apps team um, to better encompass the goal of our project and, and our team, we've, we've changed to the open source apps team. Um, I love being a member of this team. It means that I get to write code in full transparency and I get to write projects that, that people genuinely value. Um, there's a need for these, these stories to, be, to, to exist and we gladly as a company like to offer those, those apps. So what do we do? We build open source apps, duh, uh, using the runtime SDK and also the JavaScript SDK. These apps are finished. They are feature complete, meaning they combine various SDK features together to tell a full GIS story. Um, we stand by these as ArcGIS best practices. Um, they are production ready-ish, uh, meaning as you configure them for your organization's deployment, uh, we encourage you to do due diligence in testing, but we stand by the source code uh, pre your organization's testing. These projects are continuously maintained and improved, and they're for you right now, and they're free. Um, they're free because they are licensed under the Apache 2 license, and it will always be free, and will always be maintained. So for iOS, we specifically have three native iOS applications. The first is data collection. Uh, we also have a maps app, and we have an offline map book. Um, built for iOS devices, we also have an indoor routing application uh, that's built using the .NET SDK and for Xamarin, but you can run that on an iOS device. Data collection. So, data collection is possibly the most requested application we've received to date. Um, it is designed to consume, uh, to, to embrace WebGIS. So you publish to your portal, you publish web maps. And these maps can be configured for related records, and they can be configured for pop-ups, and configured with attachments. And this configuration is understood by the application, and the application dynamically responds to your web maps configuration. So identifying features on the map allow you to bring up a pop-up view, and that pop-up view also allow you to edit that record. And part of that pop-up view also consists of related records. Uh, we currently don't support many-to-many -many related records, uh, but we do support others. Uh, we also support, uh, currently in this open source project, we support photo attachments uh, for adding. But as, excuse me? <laughs> you wanna You wanna move closer? So I'm gonna continue speaking through the microphone because we record these. Um, So far, mm -hmm. so we, we have published um, over a dozen, but we support different platforms. Um, I'll get to the page and we can showcase all of them. And also at any point um, throughout the, the conference, you're welcome to join us at the island and we can show you more in depth uh, code and, and also these applications. Um, so data collection also it supports an online and an offline workflow. You might have seen it this morning in the plenary. We showcased data collection, actually. Um, and in the plenary, what you saw was what is staged on vNext, the vNext branch of, of the repository. And 
The reason why that's not master is we are waiting for update five to come out. Update five is uh, going to come out in a number of weeks. And the moment that's ready, it, it contains some features in there that, that'll go and that'll ship with update five. Um, so this app is also supported on .NET and um, Android is, is slated to come as well. So what that means, it's supported in .NET because we've also written it in .NET using the .NET SDK. Yes. And so what that means is that if your organization uses various devices, you can use the same application, you can guarantee the same application, the, the functionality of the same application, but written in different, in lang different languages and environments. Right, exactly. So why don't I show you? So as I said, everything is, is configurable. It's as simple as configuring it with the web map portal item ID. And in this case, this is the trees of Portland, Portland tree survey, uh, um, city, city map containing all the, all the street trees. So um, in the plenary, we saw adding a quick related record, but I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth with what you can, what, with what you can do. So uh, let's start by adding a new record altogether, right? So I want to add a new tree, right? Say a, a tree was planted. And uh, we chose a, a UI that allows you to actually pan the map and leave the geometry, the symbol. And so it's attached to the... Excuse me? Yes, we, we've, we've interrogated... Uh, so... If there are multiple feature layers of, so this app currently supports geometry types for point. If there are multiple layers, what it does is it actually asks you which layer you would like to add a new feature to. Not yet. There, but in order to do that, you can take the sketch editor and you can merge it in, right? Like you, you have the ability of, of taking the app that currently exists and adding what you need, right? Uh, act, exactly. And it's because it's all done in open source, I mean, adding one feature to the rest of the thing that already exists, I mean, that's, that's quite a, I mean, most of the work is already, already taken for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. The the whole map will load is exactly as it would, right? Yes. Ab absolutely. Um, there's quite a lot that's configurable actually in the application. So we'll add a new point, and it'll bring up this. Ah, looks like I might need to sign in. One second. I'm going to forgo signing in just because I don't want my uh, password forever uh, maintained on, on a video. But what that essentially, what, what that was asking of me was uh, we've integrated, we, we've demonstrated also how to use a, a reverse geocoder. And so um, that's sort of a custom functionality that we've, we've modularized on the side of the application. But what that does is because we want the address field uh, of, of this particular tree to auto-populate, what it does is the moment you create a tree, it'll run a reverse geocode for that point, and then it'll populate the address. So it was asking me for credentials uh, in order to populate that address. But this form is um, essentially, I could fill it out without the need uh, to, to do that. So one, two, three, four, five. I can, let's see, I'll select the species. So this is an example of uh, creating a, a record that has related records associated. Uh, let's say it's an apple tree. And then I'll go ahead and skip filling out the rest of the form and I'll persist the record. Right. So now that the record's persisted, 
I can start adding inspections, right? This is an, an additional supported related record type, right? Let's say the first inspection is today. And let's say it is fair condition. So that right there, is, <clears throat> this, this form uh, accounts for various field types, right? So uh, the field type that, that is returned by the pop-up manager, a custom UI for every type has been implemented so that whatever configuration is your web map, it knows how to respond dynamically. Um, and let's say that I just want to add an attachment to this record. This in. Sometimes it needs to load. I think it's. It's like it might have frozen up. Look into that. Hey, right, let's let's add that inspection. And then I'll just save it. So the inspection's been made. We have symbology that updates according to the last inspection. And the last part of this app is that I'm able to take, based on an on-demand workflow, take an area of the map offline. And so the way that works is it allows you to actually uh, determine the extent of the offline map and then fire off the, the download. Uh, then you can toggle between the two of the offline map and the online map, depending on which, which work mode you want to in which you want to work. Uh, and you can also synchronize changes between the two. Excuse me? You, you start with an online web map, yeah, right. so and then you determine the extent, That's right. You have to determine the space first, and then you can download it offline. All the time? That's, yes. In, in, in the current iteration of the application, yes. Uh, one thing we're thinking about adding is a pre-planned workflow. But you don't start with a mobile map package loaded on this, in this application, right? It's, it's, it begins with uh, the WebGIS uh, services. 